welcome. So I'm out today on a local walk and what I'm planning to do today is talk to you about my Cleveland Way experience. So anyone who watched the, the daily videos I did when I uh, walked the Cleveland Way, I did promise at the end that I would uh, I'll do a reflections video of the experience as a whole. So I hope uh, this video also proves beneficial to anyone who's uh, stumbled across my channel for the first time and is thinking of walking the Cleveland Way themselves. Uh, what I'll do today is tell you a little bit about how I went about planning my experience and what I liked about the Cleveland Way and what I didn't. There were one or two things that I wasn't so keen on. So make yourself a cup of tea Get yourself a chocolate biscuit or something healthier. Here goes an overview of my Cleveland Way adventure. So I suppose I better start with a little bit of background about the Cleveland Way. Just in case you've, uh, you've come across this video to learn a little bit more. So it's a national trail, 109 miles in total distance. And it provides a nice blend of moorland walking as the trail, the first probably 45 miles of the trail, cuts across the North York Moors. And then the remainder of the trail um, goes down the East Coast coastal paths, uh, finishing in Filey. It does provide a real nice blend of uh, different types of uh, scenery. That's one of the things that attracted me to uh, Cleveland Way in the first place. Right, so let's start with day one then. So day one, I walked from Helmsley over to Osmotherley, where I stopped at the youth hostel that night. Just over 21 miles, which also included uh, two miles um, to the White Horse and back. So you can shave two miles off the first day if, if you don't want to do that. Um, what I did find out, uh, see, after I'd done all the planning, is um, the accommodation, uh, and I can't remember the name of it now, I'll probably put, flash it up on the screen, but the, the place I stopped in, uh, in Helmsley, they did provide a service where they picked you up from Sutton Bank, which meant you could, um, you could do kind of half the distance on the first day if you wanted to ease yourself in or you didn't want to do longer distances. Um, and there's also a place called High Paradise Farm, which I highly recommend paying a visit to, by the way. Um, again, I think there's accommodation there. And that might be about, I don't know, about 14, 15 miles into the first day. So there are options. But as I was doing the walk for charity, I decided to be quite smart and, uh, and do very long distances to challenge myself. But overall impressions of first day, Thoroughly enjoyed it. Fantastic blend of woodland walk um, with the final five, six miles of the day um, moving into the moorland section. So, love day one, highly recommended. Plenty of options though if you want to do shorter days. You don't have to do what I did. Right, so day two. So, day two, I walked from Osmotherley. Um, and the walk ended on day two in a car park, I think called Gribdale or Grisdale, which is about half a mile down from uh, Captain Cook's monument. Um, I then got a taxi into Great Eaton where I was staying that night, but uh, I think, if I'm being honest, I was probably a bit silly on day two. In total, I covered almost 24 miles, probably about 23 and a half. And I'm not exaggerating when I say it was up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, hill after hill all day during, uh, during that section. Fantastic walk, really enjoyed it. I mean, um, the views from Carlton Bank um, were fantastic, and I absolutely loved the moorland section. But you know, it was a very, very tough day. The toughest day's walking I've done, and I think that was purely the sheer miles I was covering that day, and the uh, uh, the kind of amount of 
elevation. Um, I think if you're not camping though, I was when I when I was doing the planning for the walk, I didn't see many places where you could stay along the way uh, during day two. I know there was a a B and B in Kildale, um, but I decided to go on a, a few extra miles um, because I knew there'd be more options for places to stay and eat in Great Ayton. Day two. As tough as it was, it was my favourite day of the walk. Uh, I absolutely loved the uh, uh, the moorland section. And most of day two was over it. Um, so I think if you're camping, you've probably got more options on day two. But you know, as I say, I didn't see many uh, many places to stay. But overall impressions, day two, brilliant. Right, so day three. I'd sensibly decided on day three to do a shorter day, having covered the best part of 45 miles on the first two days. So I did about 13 miles, I think it was. Um, got a taxi back up to the car park at Gribdale and then walked over to uh, Saltburn. Um, the highlight for me of day three there was uh, Roseby Topping. I've never been up Roseby Topping before and it's a I think it's an optional offshoot of the Cleveland Way but you have to do it you know you're not adding many miles onto the day but in the the right weather which I had um, you've got some fantastic views from up there um, the rest of day three fairly uneventful you know, mostly woodland walking there once you'd uh, uh, once you'd left the uh, the moorland behind, a um, little bit of walking through a housing estate as well to get to Saltburn, but uh, everything was very well signposted right throughout the trail, so it was very difficult to um, to kind of miss a turning or anything like that. So yeah, that was day three. Short day, enjoyable, made even more special by being able to go up Rosebury Topping for the first time. So day four, I was uh, hitting the coastal path for the very first time. So I had another long day, about 22 miles again in total it was. I walked from Saltburn over to Whitby. Um, fantastic weather on day four, the sun. <laughs> I think from day four onwards I was blessed by the, uh, the weather. The sun was out for the rest of the trip. Um, highlights of day four for me were um, coming down into Runswick Bay. It's a great section where you walk along the beach in Runswick Bay and then you kind of walk back up onto the cliff edges between two cliffs. Um, it looks a tricky descent, I was glad I was going up but I uh, absolutely loved that. I was flagging at that point of the walk and uh, just really energised me and uh, kind of helped keep me going for the uh, remaining seven or eight miles that day. See so other, other highlights of that day, you pass through some really picturesque uh, little fishing villages such as Skinning Grove and Staves, um, you know, really beautiful, thoroughly enjoyed the uh, first day along the, uh, the coastal path. With the exception of the last two and a bit miles. Last two and a bit miles was basically walking along a pavement all the way up into Whitby. Uh, and when you've had a long day and your bones are aching a little bit, the last thing you want to be doing is pounding hard tarmac for, for the last two and a half miles. But you know what? I'd had such a fantastic day up to that point, I couldn't really complain. So yeah, day four. Saltburn to Whitby, another massive tick, thoroughly enjoyed it. Right, so day five, which was my last day on the trail, as you know, anyone who's watched the playlist of Cleveland Way videos will know that the shin injury I had from day one finally um, caused me to have to uh, abandon the walk on day five, but I did cover two thirds of it. So on day five, I was attempting to walk from Whitby to Scarborough, which 
which again was about another 22 mile day um, but what I did cover of that day again it was my favorite part of the coastal section albeit obviously I didn't get the experience of the final day to finally um, I think what made day five for me was it was a real nice blend so you've got coastal paths you, you went through some lovely little villages such as uh, Robin Hood's Bay but there's also a nice blend of, of woodland walking on on day five um, with even some kind of lookout posts that you could go in and have your your lunch if you wanted um, so again day five thoroughly enjoyable day blessed with the weather absolutely gutted that I didn't um, get to the end uh, get to Scarborough and see what the uh, uh, the rest of the walk had to offer had I made it as far as day six on day six it would have been a very short day probably about nine miles I think over to Filey um, so I've seen footage and other videos as to what to expect on that section but it's difficult for me to comment on it because I didn't complete it so overall impressions of the Cleveland Way as you probably guessed from what you've watched so far thoroughly impressed with it um, as I mentioned loved the mix of moorland and coastal paths it, it really did make for an interesting walk very well signposted albeit you know you still need to take a map with you there are points where I did have to check mine um, but I'd highly recommend it I think the key is, is obviously plan it out uh, ensure that the distances that you're looking to cover each day are ones that you're comfortable you can you can comfortably manage day after day that was my uh, one mistake is I uh, probably underestimated the stress of 20 plus mile days would have on the body uh, but that doesn't detract from you know the 90 miles that I did cover thoroughly enjoyed every every single minute of them so I think I probably need to mention some other highlights of, uh, of my Cleveland Way adventure um, obviously you know raising I think what is about 700 pounds so far plus gift aid um, for mind ultimately that was the main reason I did it I wanted to make a difference said it lots of times now but I'll say it again um, you know I can't, can't thank people enough for digging deep in these tough times and, uh, and contributing also really enjoyed the interaction I had with people on social media kind of really uh, really gave me something to, uh, to keep me going when I got back to the accommodation each night reading the messages from well wishers uh, people I've never met before on YouTube uh, commenting on the videos and, uh, and giving me some encouragement and I also you know song of the day who could forget song of the day uh, you know I don't know what what why that came into my mind really but uh, kind of coming up with a an appropriate song on each day of the walk for uh, how I was feeling at the time and what was going through my mind you know, I absolutely loved it that uh, that people put ideas forward and I'm gutted that uh, obviously I didn't get to, to use any of them because uh, the walk abruptly ended on day five before I was able to uh, bring out some of the uh, the nominations for song of the day but thoroughly enjoyed it uh, even if I did get a copyright claim off YouTube but as I say it's uh, it's all good yeah, it's, uh, not a strike which means that, uh, that the video can't stay on there so what are the next steps for me then so having had the a taste of my first ever long distance trail uh, I certainly plan to attempt uh, several more hopefully if the body allows over the uh, uh, the coming years what I had planned to do in 2021 which I'm a little bit undecided on now was uh, you know, my ambition is I really want to walk the Pennine Way as a Peak District walker the, P 
Pennine Way, you know, provides the kind of environment that I'm used to walking in. But at 258 miles, obviously there's a lot of stress going to be put on the body, um, even if you give yourself uh, many days in which to complete it. But the aim is still a possibility, so I am hoping to uh, uh, to attempt that in 2021. But uh, as I say, we'll, we'll have to see how the uh, uh, how the body holds out and. Obviously, I'm going to have to build up to it over the uh, the next 12 months. So I think I'm going to uh, start to wrap up there. I think I've uh, waffled on long enough today. Um, but I hope you uh, you know you found it interesting. You know, I've certainly enjoyed kind of recapping and reflecting on the uh, uh, the experience as a whole. Uh, if you're thinking of walking the Cleveland Way yourself and you've got any questions you know feel free to pop them in the uh, in the comments section below you know I will uh, I will answer all of them um, if it's something that you're planning to do and you want to find out a little bit more um, but as always thanks for watching all the Cleveland Way videos those who watch them thanks for watching this video <laughs> those of you who watch this one Thanks for all your support throughout uh, and I look forward to catching up with you all in the very near future. I should, hopefully, now the shin started to recover, I should be uh, out of the Peak District again very soon and uh, you know, I'll probably have the camera with me and uh, start to uh, uh, get back to doing what I love and getting some, uh, some videos from my, uh, my Peak District walks. Once again, thank you and I'll catch up with you all soon. Take care.